They were, they were like automatons. Mm. But what I couldn't work out is why they wouldn't arrest me, seeing as I was the criminal. Mm. But what they did was they went to a man who admittedly had a, had a long service record and, mm. and, you know, served our country uh, with great courage. Mm. Um, but it really panicked him. He was very stressed and upset mm. when he contacted us. So I thought, yeah, OK, you want to come and mess and intimidate and harass and actually shake down was mm. essentially what they wanted to do to the guy. They wanted to charge him 60 quid to re-educate himself. Well, yeah, this is, the, this is a fascinating point, Lawrence, because it is very much like a shakedown. They go there, they're all standing around him, and they're saying to him, we're going to prosecute you unless you agree to pay £60 pounds and attend re-education class so that your incorrect views uh, can be, can be uh, trained out of you and you won't have this problem again. Well, this is why when we did turn up, we provided them with dispute resolution forms from the Bad Law Project. Mm. And we were only going to charge them £100 if they signed them <laughs> and give them free sandwiches to come right. to London. Right. And we'd explain how, what the law is and how mm. they enforce it. Mm. But they, for some reason, they refused to sign those or come on our course. And you say they're like automatons in that they because I, I, I have a sort of sort of sentimental view and I think back to village constables of decades ago and I can't imagine them going along with anything like this. But these guys just do it unthinkingly? I think they were unthinking. I think the, the female police officer in particular was had... They were panicked, mm. which is what... We, we didn't want to panic them. We wanted to give them a dose of their own medicine. You mm. don't go... Not, people in this country should not fear having their doors knocked on for sharing mm. a meme. Mm. That's not how we operate. So we thought we'd give them a little dose of their own medicine. But as one of the officers turned around, I saw she was wearing a pride flag badge on her uniform. Right. And that, you, that is not what we do. Back in the day, there was that argument about whether the thin blue line should be on there uniform to, mm. to celebrate and lots of coppers would say no it's not it's the thin end of the wedge and they were so right you mm. know, I don't want a politicised police force uh, every single one of our foundational national institutions has been totally um, captured by this horribly mm. divisive ideology and in the absence of anyone else doing it we're going to root it out of every single one and this is just the beginning well when sir robert peel invented english policing 200 years ago he was very clear france had a very politicized uh, police force in military red and one of the reasons he chose blue was because it was important, uh, as he saw it, uh, well, he put it, uh, the police of the public and the public of the police. After watching that video footage, nobody could possibly think that's true anymore. No, it's, uh, it, and it's much worse than, than people expect. You know, mm. we, we, uh, you find it everywhere. My youngest son is being taught about white privilege, diversity, equity mm. and inclusion and gender mm. ideology in school mm. as part of a PSHE education system. Yeah. They are stonewall young champions in schools. They're, they're turning these kids into little comrades. And if we don't stop it, mm. what we'll have is these automatons who will, be, who will do what they are told and serve a political ideology. And as you say, please should police without fear or favour. I've got no problem with people turning up to police being at pride marches or anything like that. Mm. But just turn up in your uniform mm. and march in solidarity with. Don't, you know, you, you don't find them at lockdown protests dancing with the lockdowners, do you?